Canada very rarely have played live in England. And I'm going to Sunderland Empire and playing live where I've never played since I was about 16 or 17. So that is obviously going to be uh, pretty emotional for me. Here comes the rain again Falling on my head like a memory Falling on my head like a new emotion When you're an ultimate rock insider like Dave Stewart, you can fly over the best session musicians from the States for your homecoming gigs and rehearse them in a huge studio in the basement of a London hotel which you just happen to have co-founded. So baby, talk to me Like lovers do Walk with me Like lovers do Get in in those days Oh no, no, this was general. a real huge Frisian cow, yeah, yeah, wandering around and Annie was a bit nervous about it And uh, we ended up being number one <clears throat> and this video was just on like every bloody 15 minutes or something. So Annie and I arrived and it was like being a newscaster or something where you're on every night, but you're on like 20 times a day. So everybody knew who we were. Um, I'm sure many of our viewers who have uh, fond memories of, of the Eurythmics would wonder, is it possible you'll do something together, an album, a short tour? What do you think? Um, I think Annie and I will be joined at the hip forever. We're bound to do something, and in what shape or form it might be, we don't know. But um, yeah, I would say we definitely will. Just one thing. Stewart's written for and collaborated with everyone who's anyone in rock aristocracy. Dylan, Bono, one or two others. And his original way of thinking has been sought out by the great and the good. Listen, Nelson Mandela wants to talk to you on the phone. And there was a speakerphone and it was like, like nerve-wracking and then he came on the phone and he was very funny he went oh hello Dave so good of you to take my call and I was like yeah right and um, then he was talking about you know he wanted to turn the most negative number in his life of 30 odd years a prison number he was only called by 46664 he wanted to turn it into a positive number and I said what about making it a telephone number and then Nelson Mandela himself made the message when you rang it, hello, this is Nelson Mandela and blah, blah. And um, then they could hear songs. And the longer they stayed on the phone, the more they were donating to launch, you know, the foundation. Is there any truth in the story that you once entertained a notion that dogs might be able to talk and you could investigate that and perhaps uh, invest in it? Well, no, it was actually not dogs. I didn't... I once had the notion that hairless cats could possibly talk and be very comforting to older people. Did, did you get anywhere with that? <laughs> I didn't get too far with it, no, because... When I announced this idea at a press conference with Annie in Australia, I just was talking about it, and then we arrived in New Zealand, and the Hairless Cat Society turned up to meet me. Were they keen, or...? <laughs> no, they, they weren't keen. They thought I was, you know, kind of taking the mickey out of them, but I wasn't. Mm -hmm. 